Well guys, it's rare that I anticipate a fixed blade like I've been anticipating this one. And we're talking about the Topps Knives Brush Wolf. Now this has been in the works, I think for almost two years, uh, obviously produced by Topps Knives. The design is from uh, Aaron and Nate Morgan. Um, so pretty interesting. My name is Aaron. One of theirs is Aaron. My brother's name is Nate. Nate is a brother over there. So, I mean, just really interesting how that all goes. But what really set this apart for me, and as soon as I saw that they were working on this and they've been spending a lot of time really honing this design, uh, I was like, man, there's a lot going on because not only do we get this big nod to, you know, like a Nesmuk continuous sweeping blade, but it's much larger than we usually see in Nesmuk. So those are usually like four inch blades, maybe five. This guy is six inches. I mean, much larger, uh, the saw back, uh, as well as a 90 degree spine. And uh, I figured using this in the Florida and Texas brush, which is where I've been using this quite a bit, uh, would be a great place to kind of see what this brush wolf has going on and where does it fit into a survival knife, um, you know, loadout uh, design and how does it compete with what else is on the market. Alrighty, let's get this party started. Tops been using 1095 for a long time. They do it well. That's what this is made out of. 1095 high carbon steel. It's got a good uh, kind of coating to fight the rust down here, you know, right along the coast of Texas and Florida. Uh, have not had any, you know, rusting, you know, really showing up. There's a little bit of staining, which is what you're going to get with high carbons uh, in high humid environments. But um, as an example, there, like the ferro rod striker, uncoated, no, no. Um, issues with the rusting. Uh, and then what we have here is a full tang construction, nice and thick, not quarter inch, but not, you know, like super thin. And because of it's pushing definitely into a, a good weighted survival knife, uh, I think that that's a good thickness that they went with. We have a saber grind that's about halfway up the blade itself right there. And uh, again, with that Nesmuk design, just a continuous sweep. So what that means is you're going to accelerate kind of like it's a reverse recurve, if you will, if that makes sense. A recurve accelerates the cut, and that's why recurves are kind of awesome, is because every aspect is, it's hitting the the, the material at an angle and going and going through it, and so it speeds through the cut. So this is kind of the opposite of that. It's got this big fat belly, and it goes and it goes through everything that you hit in contact with it. So that makes it very easy to do a lot of different tasks, regardless if it's just general utility cordage and rope, or a lot of feather sticking. I did tons of feather sticking with this, tons of carving with this, and it's excellent. For a thick saber grind like this tool, you know, it's not like this paper thin, you know, mora or something. This is going to get, for a survival knife, have the beefiness behind it to do heavy tasks, but then the edge geometry and just the continuation again with that sweep gives it so that it's fun to make curls and, you know, get stuff going to prepare for a fire or something like that. Just you do your general, you know, wood prep, uh, those type of activities. The only area where it's not excellent is with fruits and vegetables, just because of the kind of shorter blade, meaning from edge to spine and uh, um, saber grind in the thickness. A full flat, you know, would just be better. But meat, if you're doing game and food processing, or excuse me, in like meat processing, it's gonna do really well, can do a draw cut very nicely, really happy with that. Now, the back spine is going to have not only that ferro rod um, uncoated area so for a ferro rod to throw sparks, I easily was able to get a spire going with that. Feels comfortable, you got about, mm, I don't know, two inches almost, inch and a half. Uh, right there, excellent. So you easily can get a fire going right up next to about two inches of Topps' famous sawback design. I love their sawbacks. Uh, you know, usually it's kind of hokey and like, hey, yeah, okay. This, th these just gnar and go right through and just that's that's the noise that this makes when it goes through wood and or bone and it just like eats it up real quick so that you can get perfect beautiful notches for paracord trip wires um you know those type of things um snares you know that you might be wanting to do with this easy to do uh as well as go through bone you know um if you need to break a bone or something like that so the the uh, um, area right there works great for that and then it has this drop tip which is right in line with the center of the handle right line with those uh, screws to make it easy you know for the tip to work it's nice and strong to be able to get that hole started for a bow drill uh, bow drill um, usage for a fire so it, it's lined up for that or other type of wood processing activities that you would do with that now um, batoning can absolutely crack open you know i would say three inches 
of wood, no problem, beat on it. Uh, because the tip does drop and it does have a little bit of a swedge, you are gonna kinda have to judge how thick and you won't be able to go through quite as wide uh, logs as other fixed blades in the size range just because the um, connection is kind of ricocheting off if you're going right near the tip. So you really have to hit, you have about two inches right there in front of the um, saw and that's really where the sweet spot is for connecting. So you're gonna have to back the wood up and um, again, you can go about three inches, maybe actually two and a half as I look at it more and as I think through what I was going through. Probably more like two and a half would be max, uh, just so you're not starting to ricochet off the tip and then you don't get the energy going into the wood. It goes off and you know goes off to the side. So, um, and then finally, man, there's just so much with this particular blade. Finally, chopping because of the edge, it's very easy to go through, you know, and do light hacking, shaping of wood, delimbing, all of that, you know, um, can be easily uh, done. You're not gonna follow a tree with it. You know, it just doesn't have um, the weight behind it to do that. But you can definitely do like the light delimbing to help you get a fire going, or if you're needing a piece of wood to do something else with, you're using it to shape and work with, easily done with this tool. All right, so here I am sure is the curiosity part. A lot of you guys are gonna be like, what about that handle? I'm, I'm, not, I'm kind of on the fence with that handle till you describe this to me, maybe show me some side by side. And that is what I'm going to do. And I think I have a really good take to help you guys understand the sizing of the handle in just a moment to help you guys make a good choice. Now the handle itself, nice and large, very, very large. It's got that micarta on there, three screws. Uh, it's got the tubed lanyard out the back. So you could probably pull, you know, like a bullet head off if you wanted to. Um, you got a little bit of an exposed pommel, but it's all rounded. There's no sharp angles anywhere. And the, the it's probably, burlap I'm not sure or canvas um, but that micarta really good texture right there really feels real good uh, no you know sharp angles no craziness no jimping except for a very light hit right there so I mean that's all positive very very good and uh, they brought down the shoulder a little bit more so it feels almost like it's fully rounded but you know you do have those flat sides there and then you got those bow bowl bow drivet holes right there on either side that you can do so right or righties or lefties you're going to be able to do that the screws are recessed in you know so all those things are, are really good and you have basically two grips you have this front grip that fits your index finger really nicely you got your split right there it doesn't have any issues with my large size hands fits right there zero hot spots boom and you can choke right up and start getting the work done that you need to and you can also put your middle finger right there and do more of a draw cut and pull. And that feels really good. It feels very natural to be using it that way, particularly like if you are doing some like game processing, it feels really good to do that. Then you can back up here and then you just have more of a little bit of a general, you know, um, grip. I didn't really use it here too often. I either was either choking up and doing the finer work or I was completely backing up. And because of the way that they've curvatured that bird beak a little bit, and then I stick my thumb in like this, wrap it over my hand, boom, locked in. I could get a, quite a lot of delimbing and light hacking done. Now, obviously it's not got the weight behind it to, you know, like take down uh, a massive tree or something like that, but you know, delimbing, uh, those type of activities, light hacking, shaping of wood, you're absolutely gonna be able to do that. It feels very good on that back end and you're getting quite a bit of reach, really almost eight inches um, from where your hand is to where the tip of the blade is to be able to do that whacking and thwacking. So all those aspects are really good. Now for the, uh, and the thickness is good as well. The, the thickness on the handle is really full. It's gonna be this thinness. It's just a slim kind of pencil-esque looking handle. And to give you some size perspective, uh, I have the Becker BK2 and then I have the Becker BK18 tweener edition. And basically when we put them up side by side, you can see that the Becker BK2, uh, it's about as thick as this Brush Wolf uh, on the thickness of the handle, but it's almost a third bigger from top to bottom. And so there's just a huge amount of fullness there that for those of you that have those big meaty hands or you like holding onto a big meaty knife, that's where you're gonna have that grip and that's where what that is gonna be like and the Brush Wolf is not that. It's much more like a Becker BK18 or 16 tweener. That's much more the style of handle that this has on it. So it's still good. I use the tweeners all the time, the 18 and 16, that feels good in the hand, absolutely gets the job done. Um, the blade, because it's six inches, kind of makes it almost have this visual where it's kind of odd, um, where you're kind of expecting like a little bit of a bigger handle. It absolutely gets the job done, but it is the, the neck 
is smaller, it's thinner. So you just have to decide for yourself, Do you are you more of like a Becker BK2 in 17 and say like a Topps um, Longhorn buoy, you know, an SE6, are you like big, beefy, meaty handles or do you like the thinner kind of more pencil-esque handle um, to grip and use? And maybe you have smaller hands so that works really well or maybe you don't mind that, particularly if there's three different position points to really two, but you know, uh, to use on the brush wolf that you're like, yeah, that, that works great. But to give you some perspective there, so you can decide for yourself, are you more of like the smaller compact or you need more of the bigger beefy? Well, then that will help you determine whether or not the brush wolf is the right tool for you on the ergonomic side. Now I've been saying this for a few years now, the sheath options that Tops has been doing recently are awesome and they're really stepping their game up uh, and getting rid of that nylon and really moving into uh, awesome quality leather and or kydex and this one has amazing leather great great design double stitched american made leather this great i love the tan that that has almost like an it's almost an ox nah, not an ox blood but you know it's just dark it's very very dark not a light tan um dangler two buttons super solid there uh, good hole down here for your le leg lashing if you need it, drainage hole, you know, all of that. Very easy for you to pull out. You can wet form it if you want to make it a little bit tighter, but it will hold it in place, um, you know, and it's not just going to fall right out. So excellent execution on this leather sheath and totally fits with just kind of the whole vibe of the tool. She's like this make me love leather. I, lo I mean, Kydex is still my preference, but man, leather is phenomenal. And for this tool, I feel like it fits right for the type of design and how you're supposed to execute the use of it. And guys, Tops did hook me up with this model so I could test it out, review it, give you guys pros, cons, my perspective on it, what I like, what I don't, so that you guys can make a wise choice on whether or not this is the right tool to throw in your regular rotation and to take on your next adventure or not. Now, the pricing on this goes from about 170 up to like 190. Blade HQ, I saw had it for 170 and Knife Center had it for about 190. And it kind of fluctuates anywhere in there and also depends on availability. Uh, I will have a bunch of links for you guys below in the description box so that you can take a look at this as well as the competitive options I'm going to run in to see if this is something that you're wanting to purchase. Appreciate it when you use the hyperlinks provided below. Just as one example, here is the well used and loved now Longhorn buoy from Tops 1095. About the exact same cutting edge uh, length there, maybe just a hair longer on the buoy. Uh, but you know, full tang, micarta. This guy goes for around that same price point, maybe a little bit less, maybe like 150 to 160. But it's going to come at least now in early 2022 with this kind of very basic, cruddy. Let's be honest, nylon sheath barely gets the job done. If it came with a leather sheath like this, and it was around that same price point. Man, would that be amazing? Um, so. Uh, that's a very similar price point, you know, from something else from Tops, and you get an actually a better sheath. Well, gang, there you have it. Designed to be at home in just about every environment, and it does have a ton of capability. And that blade shape is just excellent. The blade, the the, the execution, the fit and finish, all that. And it's really going to come down to that handle again. How you determine what you're connecting with, what you're looking for, and what will make the most sense. Because of all the features that the blade can do, I'm glad to have it in the regular rotation for mid weight survival knives. It definitely is that, um, and can outperform in many areas, say like a Becker BK7 or, or an SE6 because of some of the key features to make work easier, like the saw. I can make trigger you know, notches or you know, notches for say a tent peg so much faster with this than those other two blades I just listed as an example, or the you know, um, Longhorn, uh, as well as some of the other key features that make it just a quick nimble tool and it's not this overweight beefy blade. So there you have it. Uh, I encourage you guys leave a comment below. That always helps the algorithm. Uh, leave a thumbs up, super easy to do. Uh, I encourage you to check out the other video popping up. I'm always putting up content every single week. I invite you to subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber here. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there.